Hey all, Ron Coddington here from Military Images. Thought I would check in with you today. I uh, hope you're having a great weekend. I wanna share with you a story about um, uh, a gentleman who uh, made a very, very brief appearance during the Civil War. And I have to say, I have a, I have a little bit of a soft spot for stories of individuals who sort of had their 15 minutes of fame. Uh, and the gentleman that I'm talking about is pictured here on the screen. The way I found out about him was through this tiny, tiny image. I'm gonna to try to catch it in the right light so you can see it here. Um, this is a tintype or a melanotype uh, that was produced in 1861 by Abbott and Company in Nassau Street in New York. The reason and the way I know this is because that information is contained on the back. And you can see the name and address. And up top is the name of this gentleman, Leslie Coombs of Kentucky. Now, you may be asking yourself, who was Leslie Coombs and why did he get to be produced uh, in this tin type? And by the way, it was mass produced. This was probably made in the hundreds, even the thousands and circulated around the North in 1861. So who is Leslie Coombs? Why is he on this popular tin type that was distributed around the union in 1861? So, I went down the research rabbit hole to find out, and I came away with some interesting information about him. I'd never heard, uh, never heard of Leslie Coombs. And it turns out that he was uh, a native of Kentucky. He was born there in 1800. Um, and he served, uh, pardon me, served in, I'm sorry, 1793. I'm getting my dates mixed up. Um, born in 1793. Uh, Kentucky is way out there in the, the hinterlands at that time in the history of the country. During the War of 1812, uh, he's not even uh, 19 years old. Uh, he makes a name for himself as the boy captain. He distinguishes himself uh, under um, a brigadier general uh, named William Henry Harrison up in the Army of the Northwest. Uh, Harrison, of course, is a name that presidential aficionados will know. Um, but here we have a very, very young Leslie to Coombs, who is uh, impressing Brigadier General Harrison. After the War of 1812, Leslie Coombs studies law. He becomes a successful lawyer, uh, makes a, a good name for himself. And by 1839, he's on the stump for his old general, William Henry Harrison. So I want you to picture Leslie Coombs in this uh, image here, Leslie Coombs not dressed in this cravat and coat, but he's wearing uh, um, what they call a hunting shirt, which nowadays those of us who study the Civil War would call it a battle shirt. But he's wearing a hunting shirt, probably some frontier pants, and he's wearing a sash supporting Harrison, and he's out there stumping for Harrison uh, and uh, making these speeches. He has a sparkling voice, according to one newspaper story about him. So here's Leslie Coombs stumping for Benjamin or for William Henry Harrison. Uh, and Harrison, of course, uh, wins the presidency only to die um, not too long afterwards. So uh, uh, Coombs goes into the legislature of Kentucky and serves for some period of time. Um, he loses at one point to a guy named John C. Breckinridge, who of course goes on to be uh, into national politics and then into the Confederacy uh, as a general. So uh, Leslie Coombs has this long history in Kentucky from the War of 1812 to the state legislature. And so you may be wondering, what is his moment of fame in 1861. Uh, and um, uh, his moment of fame is a request that he makes um, to keep Kentucky in the Union. 
Uh, and uh, the newspapers carry this request that he made, and it's published on April the 29th, 1861. So we're only a couple of weeks after Fort Sumter, uh, and Kentucky is in peril. Um, it's divided. You've got loyalists who want to remain in the Union. You've got secessionists who want to take Kentucky um, out of the Union. And so Leslie Coombs is firmly planted on the side of remaining in the, uni in the Union. And uh, he writes uh, a note that gets picked up by newspapers. He says, Mr. Crittenden, that's John Crittenden, uh, the well-known senator, is absent. And here's the question. Can we get arms and money for the self-defense of the Union? When and how? That quote right there, asking for arms, uh, is what gets him into the newspapers. The request is, for, is forwarded to uh, General Wool for action. So it's one of those moments in time where uh, Americans are, the, the, the story of Kentucky is cons being consumed by Americans on both sides of the country. And here Leslie Coombs is asking for arms and they're describing as a general. I found no reference uh, that he was a general. The highest rank that I could find that he achieved was captain, but somewhere along the way, he may have been in a militia and had become a general or at least a higher ranking officer. So I do want to mention one more thing. Um, six days before the April 29th article that appears in newspapers across the country, um, he writes a letter um, uh, that winds up being in the official records of the War of the Rebellion. Now, this particular letter doesn't get picked up by any newspapers, at least that I can find, but he's, uh, he's, he's asking um, and trying to get to, he's trying to get to General Winfield Scott, who is the commander of the army. And he's basically going on and on about uh, the problems in Kentucky. Uh, he's basically saying, you got a governor that he's worried about the governor. He's worried about um, everyone in Kentucky. Um, he's worried about John Breckinridge. Uh, and he says, the triumph of the Union Party is their eternal political death, and they are becoming desperate. Uh, and he says, whatever General Scott wants done, please keep me advised. So Leslie Coombs is basically trying to stay in the game. He's at this point, he's close to 70 years old. Um, uh, and so despite his age, he has a lot of vim and vigor and is trying to make headway to keep Kentucky in the Union. So Leslie Coombs right here uh, probably gets this memorial tintype by Abbott. Well, I'll turn this around again um, by Abbott and Brothers because of that letter, that newspaper letter get, gives him that 15 minutes of fame. So um, Coombs, uh, I can't say that he kept Kentucky in the Union, but he certainly was a voice uh, that helped make that happen. So Leslie Coombs continues on. He lives a long life. Um, he finally uh, passes in 1881. I think he's 88 years old. Uh, and of course, his name is mentioned in many newspaper, uh, his obituary newspapers, his obituary makes it around. Uh, and um, some people remember what he did in 1861, but most remember his service in the War of 1812 and his connection to Brigadier General and then President William Henry Harrison. So that's the story of Leslie Coombs. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with another story at some point in the near future. Until then, take care. Bye.